Welcome back to Worm Week. I hope you've all been enjoying it so far. Today's video is on the world's biggest worms. Now, as we already know from previous videos, the scientific definition of a worm is very loose, so a wide range of different organisms can be counted as worms. This causes a lot of problems when trying to find the largest worm in the world, and so I've chosen to look at a wide variety of some of the biggest worms around. The definition of biggest also leaves a lot up to interpretation, as it can mean length, weight, or width. In the end, this is just an excuse to look at some pretty cool and strange worms, and the exact definition of biggest will be left vague. First up, we have a rather large worm from Africa. It can grow up to 6.7 meters long, but only averages about 1.4, which is still enormous, but not as long as others on this list. It can weigh over 1.5 kilograms, which is pretty hefty for a worm. They don't live throughout all of Africa though, and only inhabit the Southern Cape, and are particularly common in the Karoo. Other than being enormous, there isn't much that makes them exceptional, as they are simply a kind of earthworm, and so do all the usual earthwormy things, like staying underground, and only really coming to the surface when it's wet. Overall, a very big worm, and probably the biggest earthworm species, and definitely the biggest in Africa. We don't really know why they get so big, but hey, I'm not complaining. Next we have our second earthworm species on the list, this one hailing from Australia, the land of oversized nightmare fuel. That being said, the giant Gippsland earthworm has not been found to grow to the same sorts of sizes as the African giant earthworm. They grow on average to one metre, but at a maximum of three, which still makes it enormous and the largest in Australia by far, but just not as big as the African one. Just like the African giant earthworm, they also spend almost all their time underground, and only heavy rains will flush them out. This is because they don't live in the topsoil layer, but actually in the deeper subsoil. But the subsoil where, you might be thinking? Well, if you're Australian, you probably already know because Gippsland is an area in the state of Victoria. Because they spend so much time in the deeper subsoil and rarely breach the surface, they create huge burrow systems, as you can probably imagine. Their size slows them down, however, and limits their population, as their habitat can't support so many large worms. This has caused them to be classed as endangered, sadly, alongside massive habitat loss. Bootlace worms are a strange entry on this list. It is a species of marine ribbon worm. Now these worms are technically the longest on this list, but certainly not the biggest by mass. This is because despite growing to supposedly 55 meters in length, they are only about five millimeters in width. So really they are basically a marine silly string, but they're still technically a very long worm. And if the 55 meters is to be believed, which I must say is a disputed length, then they are the longest animal on earth. They inhabit the coast of Britain, Denmark, and a bit of Norway, the North Sea essentially. Other than their extreme length, the interesting thing about these worms is their toxic mucus. They have been observed to release vast amounts of sewage smelling mucus that is toxic enough to kill crabs Next we have the giant tube worm, another marine worm, however this is a bristle worm, not a ribbon worm. These worms live in similar places to the Pompeii worm, which was this week's sand of the week. That place being deep sea hydrothermal vents near the Galapagos. However these guys can get very big, up to 3 meters in length. That isn't as big as the supposed 55 meters of the bootlace worm, but they are much thicker at 4 centimeters. The amazing thing, other than their length, is their feeding technique. They lack any digestion digestive system, so the way they survive is through a symbiotic relationship with bacteria that lives inside of them. The natural minerals, oxygen and carbon, released by the hydrothermal vents, are taken into its branchial plume and transported in a crude vascular system to cavities where the bacteria is stored. The bacteria is able to then consume and survive off these minerals. As the bacteria feed, they produce energy which is then transferred to the giant tube worm in order to live off. This is a woefully simplistic way of explaining a very complex system, but if any of you are up for some A-level biology, this is called chemoautotrophic symbiosis and I implore you to look further. Now we move on to the tapeworms, another type of worm that can get shockingly big. Whale tapeworms, called Tetragon opterus, are found inside of whales unsurprisingly, and therefore can grow to a shocking 40 meters in length, but probably bigger as that's just the largest we have recorded. Up to 5 centimeters thick, these are not just tiny strings like the bootlace worm, these are truly enormous. They live in the Arctic exclusively and are found most commonly in the toothed whales. Now you may be thinking, how does a whale get a 
tapeworm in such a vast ocean? Well, it's because these tapeworms release huge volumes of fertilized eggs into the ocean. Each of its segments, and it can have around 45,000 segments, each contain multiple ovaries and testes, producing vast amounts of eggs and sperm each day. Well over 700,000 eggs per day, and probably close to a million. The offspring are then expelled alongside the whale's feces. In the tapeworm's lifetime, they can produce billions of offspring. But considering how vast the ocean is, and how few whales there are in comparison, only the tiniest fraction will ever survive. Finally, we have the beef tapeworm. Much smaller than the whale tapeworm, but these are the largest to occur in humans. Usually they're only 4 to 10 meters long, but they can get to a whopping 22 meters, which is truly horrifying. They're mostly caught from eating poor quality beef that hasn't been prepared properly, and can therefore be found worldwide due to global trade. These worms, and all tapeworms for that matter, don't have a complex digestive system. Instead, these worms are covered entirely in tiny hair-like structures called microtreatures, which allow it to absorb nutrients from the outside. Overall, it's clear there are a lot of very big worms owing to how diverse worms are. In my opinion, and this is just an opinion, the whale tapeworm is the biggest worm in the world. Owing to its enormous recorded size of 40 meters, the fact that this isn't even the maximum possible extent, and the fact that it is far thicker at 5 centimeters than the other clear contender, the bootlace worm, at a measly 5 millimeters. Now, we've just talked about giant earthworms in this video, but if you you want to take a look at some smaller earthworms, click here to look at a video by my mother about the invasive earthworm species in North America and how they're devastating the environment there. I encourage you to go watch it and subscribe as it's some very interesting content and perfect for worm week. Thank you for watching this Worm Week video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.